Welcome everybody, it's Debbie O'Neill of Scrummy Quick Designs. I am going to be making a project that's super fun today. Our members in our Let's Learn Cricut Design Space Facebook group asked me if I would show them how to make this. It's that red vintage truck that's super popular everywhere right now, and but it has the lighted Christmas tree in the back of the truck. So I'm going to show you exactly how to make this. In this particular one, we're going to be using Cricut Iron-On Vinyl. And then I'm going to make a second one, which is a different red vintage truck, but I'm going to use regular Cricut Premium Outdoor Vinyl. For this project, the first thing we're going to need is you will need a canvas. So I will uh, have a supply list here for you and I'm going to go over all the supplies in a minute. But to be able to size this on my, when I'm in design space, I know I'm going to use an 8x10 canvas. So I just came over here into shapes and I selected a square and then I just sized it up here in my layers panel to be a 8 by 10 okay because that's the canvas size that this particular project is going to go on so that's the first thing is I created myself a template all right that's what this big white box is and then I took the image of the truck and I sized it until it fit on my project the way that I wanted it so depending upon what frame you're using for the 8 by 10 I've already got everything sized to fit on an 8 by 10 if you want to use the same file so in the description where you see this video on YouTube I will have my design space file link there for you and you'll be able to make it exactly the way I did I wanted to add a saying to the top of this okay so I went into design space. There's a ton of Christmas holiday sayings. Let me show you how to find those. So I went into images and I, then I go into categories. I want to go into categories and then I want to go down to where it says Christmas. This is just a shortcut way to do this. And then once I get to categories and I'm in Christmas, then I want to come over here to filter. And I want to come down here underneath type and I want to pick phrases. Sorting everything that has a phrase on it that is in design space that is part of Christmas. So you can go through and you'll start finding all kinds of phrases that you can use for your projects. And so some of them are phrases on cards and some of them are just standalone phrases. But I just kind of scrolled through this until I found some phrases that I liked. Of course you can create your own phrase by using the text in design space to you know make whatever you want or you can upload an image if you would per prefer to do that i like to use what's in design space because it makes me craft quicker and easier that way <laughs> so now we're back to my design space file so that's where the merry christmas y'all came from it is an image in design space the tree and truck are also an image in design space but when i was looking at this project i wanted to customize my truck so that it had my family's name on the back of the truck and i wanted to just cut that out so i'm going to use a slice feature so here is the truck image that's in design space and I'm going to duplicate it so over here in your layers panel I'm just going to duplicate it so I always have one that isn't doesn't already have my name on it so I can make these for other friends so for each one I would just duplicate it and then do the same process all right so I'm going to do go into text and then I'm going to type in my family's name and the word family so whatever you want to use is fine I prefer to use like the Cricut Sans font because it's a nice clean font it's easy to read it's easy to weed and uh, it will fit nicely within the the truck here so once I get this my name the way that I would like it it will go my image of the truck highlighted that and you're going to notice over here in the layers panel it is grouped so I need to ungroup the truck now the truck is already one single layer it's not it doesn't have multiple layers it has multiple colors but they're all on the same layer level okay so if it had multiple layers you would have to then ungroup the whole thing and then just find the one layer that you want to slice on because you can only slice one single layer at a time so that's why I only had to ungroup it and then I'm going to take my name I'm going to just do send to the front so it'll be here and then I'll, I'll figure out where on here do I want to have this so it looks good 
There we go. I'm going to highlight that and then I'm going to do control shift and then I'm going to highlight the truck. Okay. And now in your layers panel down here on the bottom and the word slice is going to pop up and now you can use the slice feature. So I'm going to slice it. Okay. So I'm going to pull this away and now I have the O'Neill family on the back of my truck and then I'll just group this. Okay. So that's showing you if you wanted to put an, a name on here, you could certainly do that. Okay. So now I have single layers for all of my images that are going to go on my truck. Leave this on here. I'm going to get rid of this one. I don't need it. But when you get the design space file from me, it'll be in the description of the video. If you want to use the same thing that I did, then you could just do the follow the same process where I duplicated the truck over here in the layers panel so I had one that doesn't have a name cut out of it and then I typed in the name and then I sliced it so that then I had a truck with the name that's what I'm using here so if you wanted to make multiple gifts for people that's how you would do it make sure you always keep a duplicate copy of that blank truck so that then you always have one you can use what we're going to do now is we're going to go over and we're going to cut this project out now we do not need the the extra truck or my name i'm going to leave those in the file for you but for right now when i go to cut it i'm going to come over here and i'm going to just click the eye to hide that truck and then i'm also going to do the same thing for my family name because you don't need that and i don't need the box the white box was just the template that we created for this project so i'm going to go over here and hit the little square eye on the square and now I have just exactly what I want to cut out to make my project so we're going to go over in to make it and we're going to go to our matte screen all right now because we're working with iron-on we have to remember to mirror our image so we want to go in here and I'm going to click the mirror button on each of these levels so watch watch the shape and when you click mirror, it's going to flip it over so that it's in the right orientation. So you want to do that on every one. So this is a good one to look for. So there's Merry Christmas, y'all, and the and the um, the tires for the truck. So I'm going to go in. I'm going to hit mirror, and then it has now reversed those. So I like to do it. Go ahead and do each one before I do my cutting because that way I don't forget to mirror my image. Okay, so now I can go back up to the first one and I'll be able to start cutting out what I want to do. So you'll just cut out everything and then I'll show you how to go in and weed everything and show you all the supplies that I used. Okay, so let's talk about the supplies that you're going to need for the lighted Christmas tree with the vintage red truck where we're going to be using iron-on. So the first thing is you need to have your iron-on. I'm using Cricut Everyday Light in red, green, silver, and black. And I will be applying it using my Cricut Easy Press 2 and I'll probably use the 6x7 size and of course the Cricut Easy Press mat to protect my surface. So you'll need to have those things, whatever iron-on you want to use. Now there's certain tools you're going to need. So we will be using a uh, heat a uh, glue gun to be able to put our lights on the back of our canvas so you want a glue gun and some glue sticks and also I like to have like a popsicle stick or one of those little rubber cap things that you can put on the end of your finger as we're if we need to press down with the back of the lights to put it in the glue this is helpful so you don't burn your fingers on the glue now we will need to slice the back of our canvas to put our um, lights through so we want to make sure that we have a uh, some type of an exacto knife i'm using the cricut true control knife because i like the fact it has a nice grip on it and these blades are very sharp and do a great job in slicing into the canvas a paper piercer is not usually good enough because it doesn't make a big enough hole for the shape of these lights so uh, some type of exacto the true control knife works great a weeding tool of course because we'll be weeding the vinyl and then also a pair of scissors because we'll want to trim up the vinyl to get it ready to put on our canvas now 
Let's talk about the lights because you can't have a lighted canvas without lights. Now these are little fairy lights. That's what they call them. They're LED lights and I get them on Amazon and they come in packs of either three or six or 12 or whatever. I tend to look at whatever looks like the best price to me. I will link it up in the description in the video as well as all the other supplies here. And um, these come in different colors. So this is the bright white, okay? So you can kind of see that it probably has a little bit of a blue tint on camera. And then also they have warm white, which is more of a traditional old fashioned white uh, yellowed kind of light. OK, and then they also have multicolor. OK, so for this particular project, I wanted to use the multicolor lights on my tree. So I will be using multicolor and these just switch on and off. OK, and we'll be applying them to the back of our canvas and this little doohickey here. You might want to use some Velcro that's, or use some tape. It's up to you what you want to use. So but you will need your lights. OK, and then, of course, you're going to need your canvas. So we'll be working on an eight by ten canvas. This is just a, a stretched canvas. It's an artist canvas. You can get them at the craft stores. I buy mine either at Michael's or online. I tend to like to get them um, when the, when the, in the value packs because then they're usually a lot cheaper that way and I'll wait till they go on sale. Stretch canvas means that it is on a stretched canvas across a wood frame. Okay, so you're going to end up with this hole in the back here, right? And the secret to getting good adhesion when you work with canvas is you need to put something behind this hole so that you have something to press against. Because if you were just to flip this over now and try to iron on it, you're really stretching the canvas and it's pushing down into here and you may not get the best adhesion on your canvas. So the tip to that is is find a book or a board or something that would work that's going to fit in the back of your canvas. It doesn't have to fit just absolutely perfectly. I just happen to find a book that fit great, but you want something that's fairly flat. I don't want it standing up too high outside of the canvas because I want when I go to press down to create on my canvas, I want to have a good even surface. So you know, I just looked around the house and found a book that worked and then I wrapped it in white butcher paper that I had on hand. You could use like a, a brown grocery bag or something. I just want to protect the book jacket cover because since we are going to be applying heat to this, I want to make sure that um, none of that ink transfers onto my canvas or that I ruin the book cover. OK, now, you know, the used bookstores are great places or when the libraries do their big sales at the end of the year uh, to get rid of, um, you know, books. This is a good thing to do. And then, of course, you'll need a light grip mat to be able to cut out your iron on vinyl. Now, when you go to cut your iron on out, of course, remember the iron on has the shiny side, which is the carrier sheet is on this side. And when you go to apply your iron on, you will be putting it the shiny side down on the mat and then you'll cut out your image and then we'll weed that. So I'll show you weeding, but I wanted to show you right now that you want to make sure that you have mirrored your image and that you want to make sure that you um, put the shiny side down before you go to cut. All right, so let's get started. OK, so once you get all your iron on vinyl cut, then you need to weed it. And I've already done some, but I wanted to just show you the process. So I kind of trim around the vinyl piece that's cut so that I end up with a smaller piece to deal with. And then I'm saving more material to use on a different project. So you want to take your weeding tool and you're just going to grab an edge and then pull this back and this iron on feels a little bit like a piece of plastic. <laughs> And it just comes off of that liner just like that. OK, so this part, you just throw it away. You can't reuse that. And then you will have your weeded image. OK, and then what I want you to do is trim around your edges of that. Now we're going to leave just a little bit of that liner around the edge of each of the shapes, but you are not going to cut onto the actual vinyl. You're just cutting that plastic liner just around to leave just a little bit of it. That plastic liner is what the heat's going to be against, so we don't want to cut into the iron on when we're doing this. Okay, so here is the piece, and then this is the shiny side, is the side that has the liner on it. Okay. And I've left the, I don't know if you guys can see that, I've left the edge of 
around this whole thing there's like a border <laughs> of just that clear liner is around it okay so you want to do that for every piece I like to weed using my mat it just makes it a little easier to keep it in place that's a personal preference so however you like to weed and then we have our project all weeded out let me show you so I've gone around even that little piece of the window I've trimmed around the edges of that so it's mimicking it as close to it as I possibly can um, the flat side of the tree image this side needs to be trimmed fairly close to that edge because we're going to be laying it into our project so it's easier to do that and up here around the edge of the tree I'm just gonna take my scissors and do a little fussy cutting around that okay so we're getting to the point where we're going to be able to get these ready to go on our project I did the same thing with my with my image that's the phrase I just kind of cut around it and also on the wheels so same thing I left the wheels together and then I weeded away the rest of it so I have the wheels and they're spaced appropriately that's why they cut out that way in design space so they go in the right position on your back of your truck and then I've already weeded away the vinyl for the tr the red truck okay now when you go to do your letters if you have added your name to the middle of the the back panel of the truck make sure you leave the centers of your letters in place as you weed away the excess okay so you can see here where my fingers rubbing across it so you can see that part is all weeded away but I left the centers like on my O I left the center and the E and the A on here so you want to do that when you go to weed this so when you're when you've got it laying face down you're pulling away the letter part but leaving the center of the letter so that when you go and put this on you're going to be able to clearly read it and it's left the centers on okay I hope that makes sense now that we get all our pieces cut then we want to start prepping to get ready to apply the heat okay so now we're gonna apply the iron-on onto our canvas so I have my protective cover for my desktop so I'm using a Cricut easy press mat I have my Cricut easy press this is the six by seven I decided to use that on this and the temperature for iron-on and the can canvas is 340 so I've set that it'll warm up for me and 30 seconds is the maximum amount so I've already got it set for 30 seconds when a little um, orange head turns green that means that it's ready for us to start adhering it so while this is warming up let's go ahead and take a look at what we need to do over here so we've got all of our layers cut and trimmed and weeded from the iron-on all right so use your using your um, design and design space or your image for whichever image you're using you would kind of start laying out where you want to put things on your canvas right so the one thing I want to caution you on is that you have a wood piece that runs down the length it's about an inch wide down the side of your canvas you want to make sure that your tree is the top the tip of your tree is going to be within with not on that wooden piece because we're going to want to put a um, light up here in the top of the tree so make sure that your tree is not sitting on top of that wood frame okay so that's my first tip for doing this particular project and then so once I've got this on here I've kind of layered the different pieces but there's a bunch of different layers for this okay so we will be using a Teflon sheet to help us as we go through each of the different layers um, uh, Cricut makes one and then these are Teflon sheets I got off of Amazon I'll link all both of those up in the description of the video the Cricut easy press just let me know that it's ready it kind of beeped at me and it is the green head so we know we can get started so once I know where my tree is gonna go I can go ahead and remove my tree because it's going to go on last we're going to put on our 
uh, base of our truck first, okay, because it's kind of like a puzzle. You can see here I've trimmed around the edges of the protective sheet, and you can see that there's like little cutouts in here, and that's where the different pieces of the tree lie against. So we want to put this down first, and then, and I know we're going to have it. I'm going to move this off for right now, and once we get this on here where we wanted it, then you're going to apply your heat. So we're going to take this, we're going to lift it straight up onto here. We're going to make sure all of it is covered. And then I'm going to hit the green head. Now, I'm not going to do the full 30 seconds. I'm probably just going to do about 20 seconds because we're going to be putting heat over this a couple of times. Now, I'm not applying hard pressure. I'm just applying even pressure. And my easy press is sitting within that wood frame, so I'm getting good adhesion. So I'm going to lift that up. And we'll let this cool off for a second because it'll need to cool. Now, remember, we do have our book un underneath the bottom here so that we have a nice, smooth surface to push this on. Okay. Now, this is a warm peel uh, iron-on. The Cricut Light or Cricut Everyday iron-on is a warm peel. So you need to make sure that this is completely cooled off. Right now, if I put my fingers on it, it's too hot to touch it. It feels like it's going to burn my fingertips. So I want to wait till this is cool, and then we're going to peel off the protective covering. Because I have the book under it, it's probably taking a little bit longer to cool to, for it to cool off. But you don't want to lift it up too soon, or it's not going to your your vinyl has not had time to stick to your canvas. Okay, that's where a lot of people they rush it, they get in too big of a hurry. Each different type of iron-on has a different way you need to remove it. Some of it is what they call cold peel, where you take it off after it is completely cold to the touch. Other, you need to wait until it's warm to the touch. So this now feels more warm. So I'm going to lift up the edge. Sometimes you need to use your Cricut tool to get in there. And I'm going to start rolling this back and taking the liner off. Okay. Now the liner's sticky and it's probably sticking to your canvas. So just give it a little bit of a tug, making sure as you're peeling it off that your that your iron that your um your vinyl image is stuck onto your project. If it looks like it's lifting up, lay the liner liner back down and add just a teeny bit more heat to it and then go through the cooling off process again. Okay, this is looking great, guys. Okay, so we're just gonna get that. All right, so we've got our first layer on. We're gonna add the bumper next. So we're gonna put the bumper down. If you look at the design space file, there's a little bit of a break between the bottom of the truck and where the bumper is. So I just laid it just slightly like that. And then I'm gonna put my window piece up here in the corner where it looks like it goes right here in my design space file okay so i'm just going to lay that piece in there what i'm going to lay the tires on next okay because we want to be able to peel this liner off but this is when you want to use your protective covering again because you want to make sure that you are not putting too much heat on top of your iron on that you've already ironed on so we're just going to lay this back down here and I'm going to hit the green button again and I'm going to just do it like again for about 20 seconds so when it gets down to 10 seconds and I'm just I'm not even I don't even need to put this hand on I'm just caught one hand on it and I'm just pressing down slightly because we have that book underneath there and I'm making sure I don't have my easy press setting on on top of the wood let me peel that up okay and we're going to let this cool It'll take a second or two, right? So once you let it cool, then we're going to peel that layer off, and then we're going to put our tires on. This is how you're going to do it as you're piecing different iron-on together. Now, this this layered, this layered image was multicolor, but it was not layered, okay? If it was layered, there would be colors laying on top of each other. Um, this one came as one flat piece. Okay, I think we should be good. I'm going to go peel up the edge of this and see if I can lift it off. Uh, perfect okay so it's good lift that up okay now our tree's going to go down we have our tree and our tires <laughs> i couldn't think of the word so you're going to put your tires down 
just like that. And now we're going to lay our tree on. Okay, so the tree's kind of like a little bit of a puzzle. You can see where there's indents around the edge of the truck, and it's definitely not going to be on the frame there. Exciting part where we're going to get to use our lights on our canvas. So you need to think of it that the lights are going to be poking through the top of your tree, okay? And then the rest of this, all the wires are going to be back behind. So we will start with the very end of our light, okay? So whatever is the end piece, not the piece with the this uh, control on it, that's going to be the very top of our tree. So whether you're using, if you're using the multicolor lights or you're using the white lights or whatever, the top of our tree is going to have a light up there. That's going to where the end's going to start. Then we're going to be maneuvering this wire, and I'm just doing it on the front just to give you all an idea. You're going to maneuver the wire until you have kind of covered the whole thing and making sure that you have light shining through. So the wire's just going to get twisted. You're going to keep going through and we're going to we have there's 20 lights on here okay so you're going to have 20 lights on your tree and you'll just kind of keep maneuvering it around so just to give you a feel for what it's going to look like look how pretty that's going to look but the wire is going to be hidden behind and we're going to poke holes to put our actual light bulb through so it shines through now the end piece down here okay this is this piece the last light on your string is going to need to end up down here at the end on the end of your tree. Okay, so as you're putting your lights on, just kind of make sure you're thinking about that, that the end one needs to end up down here on this part of the tree. You're going to have this piece, which is the controller. The controller, let me flip this over, the controller is going to need to sit down here on the inside of your frame so that people can turn their... Um, turn their lights on or off okay so that's where it's going to end up here in the middle down like this all right so we're going to do this so the lights are going to go in okay so there's the lights and then this is kind of the direction that we're going to be going with the with that we can turn the lights on if you want now what I like to do is go ahead and start poking holes in the front of my canvas so I've got it raised up right I don't have my book back here anymore and I'm gonna take my exacto knife and I'm gonna go ahead and just start making a little slit where I want some of the lights to go You can kind of put them where you want. Now, as you're doing this and putting the slits in it, that's when we're going to start poking our hole, poking our light through that little hole that you made. Once you start making the little slits, you don't want those holes to be too big, but you want to be able to see them on the back so you know where your light needs to go through. So I just use a toothpick that'll help push that through. Toothpick or something is helpful to be able to poke your hole. So once you've kind of made your slit, you can go in and poke your toothpick in it just to make it a little bit easier to find where the holes are. And it'll give you a spot to push your lights through. And then what I did was once I, once I had the holes, so you can kind of start seeing the holes, then you just start pushing the lights in. Okay, so go ahead and warm up your glue gun. And then you can just maneuver the wire around on the back. It doesn't matter about the wire because you're just going to be, we're going to be gluing those down in a minute. But I want to go ahead and get a few of the lights in first. I know it's tedious to get all the lights in, but once you get them all in and you kind of hot glued different parts of the wire down, and then you have that end piece, okay, which is the where the battery is, and we need to be able to lay this on the bottom so that you can reach underneath wherever you have this set, whether you put it on an easel or you hang it on the wall. Um, and so we want to set it down here on the bottom, 
okay? And I tried hot gluing this, but what happened is these don't like the hot glue because that's where the battery is. So um, I thought we could hot glue them. Um, we're not able to do that. It's just I couldn't get it to work by hot gluing it, but it works fine if you take some double-sided sticky tape or you use some Velcro, double-sided uh, Velcro, you could do that. So I'm just going to use some of my score tape. I just grabbed my quarter inch tape, so I'm putting three or four, three strips on the back of this just to give it enough to hold it on. But, um, and then you're just going to lay it here on the bottom edge and then just press down firmly to get it to stick and then I'm probably going to go ahead and lay a piece or two. I did not want to put more this end of the wire is much thicker and I didn't really want to put more uh, hot glue on the back of the canvas there so I'm just going to use some double sided tape here and I can kind of tuck the rest of that underneath the frame just a tad and that should be fine. Okay so the back of your canvas is going to look like this now that you've got your lights all in and you have this on and now we're going to see the magic of the frame so I'm going to turn it on with the switch ta-da! woohoo! alright so this is super fun uh, this is using the iron-on uh, Cricut iron-on vinyl and then uh, using this vintage truck that came in design space and also the Merry Christmas y'all is in design space but you make yours your own and uh, I'm going to show you one more project that I've made using a lighted canvas that I think you might find fun and give you an idea of something else you could make. Now this piece is a, pe is a canvas piece that I made on a black canvas that is it's lit up it's hard to see on camera because it's those uh, those more vintage yellowish lights that I showed you but this is a sign that's in my craft room it says this is my happy place and I used uh, iron on vinyl for um, for the letters and then I used a pattern vinyl for the happy so think about all the different signs that you can make using the same technique I hope you guys enjoyed that please subscribe to my YouTube channel let me know if you have any questions or if you have another tutorial that you'd like to see me make something for you. Talk to you later. Happy crafting.